Hello everyone and welcome to our next chapter, our last of the semester. So uh, today's video is going to be on differential equations and slope fields. So let's first off talk about what a differential equation is. Um, a differential equation, and we're going to see this phrase a lot, uh, a differential equation is an equation containing a function and its derivatives. So for example, a simple one would be like dy dx equals xy plus 2. So that would say, okay, the derivative of some function is equal to x times that function plus 2. Or dy dx is equal to uh, x times tangent of y squared minus 3x. So the key of a differential equation is you have some kind of derivative in there and then a y as well. Um, and there are also, you could have like a second derivative one, you could have like the second derivative of y is equal to like, you know, y cubed minus x squared. So these are examples of differential equations where you have a derivative and it's, it's um, the original function y in it. Now, your goal in any kind of a differential equation that we're going to be working towards in this chapter is to solve for y. Try and find what is the original function y um, that makes this equation true. Now, let's talk about differential equations. These are crucial. Um, these turn out to govern pretty much every facet of our life uh, in terms of how light works, how sound waves work, how electronic transmissions work, um, how electrons move. Everything is described with differential equations. Um, even physical properties like acceleration and velocity uh, can be described with differential equations. So some people, their entire life is spent just solving differential equations. Um, now, I took about three classes in college on differential equations. We're going to spend about a week in here on DEs. Um, so I think this should be pretty useful for you. Uh, so DEs is another abbreviation. Sometimes you'll see Diffie Qs uh, is another way you'll see differential equations abbreviated. I like DEs because I'm lazy. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to do today. Today, we're going to approximate uh, them with what's called a slope field. Okay, so we're going to approximate these with a slope field. So here's what a slope field looks like. Uh, I'm going to show you this. So here's a cool example of a slope field. So this is for the differential equation, dy dx equals y squared minus 2x plus 1. And what this is, is this is a graph of the slopes at various points. So if you took the point, say, you know, like negative 1 comma negative 2, and you plugged it in and got a value for, for y prime, it would show you what that slope looks like. So this is just a graph of what the slope is of dy dx at various points in here. Um, there's no significance to the arrows, by the way, they don't really mean anything. But different differential equations are going to have totally different slope fields. So if you try something pretty relatively normal like cosine x plus y, you get something that, that looks like that. Like, oh, that's kind of cool. It has like the little shoop de in the middle and then things kind of are just vertical. And then you can see some that are just like bat crap crazy. So we could do like xy cosine of like x, xy times cosine of like x squared minus y and you'll see oh, let's do tangent tangent is more messed up than cosine and you'll see that this one just looks like pretty insane right there's crazy stuff happening all over the place so slope fields like this they look pretty awesome i mean and you could have some that are just like nice and boring and pretty so you could have like dy dx equals x over y and just gives you kind of a symmetric nice feel like that so anyway um this is an example of what a slope field looks like. Now, what you probably want to do is how do I create my own slope fields? Of course. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So how do we create a slope field? Now, a slope field, again, like I said, is a graph of the slope at various points, various points, x comma y. Okay, so for example, um, let, let's just look at one. So say I tell you dy dx equals 2x minus y, and I'm going to ask you to sketch the slope field at these 12 points. Okay, and the 12 points that we're going to do, I'm just going to draw out a pretty simple one here. So... This is something you'll be asked to do by hand on the AP test, perhaps. Um, so again, we'll say this is 1 and 2 and 1 and negative 1. So those are the 12 points you have. And we're going to try and sketch our own slope field at these 12 points. 
Okay, now basically what you're going to do is, first off, you're going to find dy dx. Okay, so find dy dx. In this case, dy dx was given. That was very easy. Second, uh, and usually it'll be given. Second, at each point, uh, so at each point x comma y, I'm going to plug that in to find the slope. Okay. Um, so I'm going to plug in to find the slope dy dx. So let's start, for example, in the lower left corner. So that's the point negative 1, negative 1. If I plug in dy dx, that's 2 times negative 1 minus a minus 1. That's negative 2 plus 1. That's negative 1. So now what I'm going to do to actually draw the slope field is 3. I'm going to go ahead and sketch a line through that point. with the slope of dy dx. Okay. So at that point, I'm going to draw a line with a slope of negative 1. Now, just to go over what that's going to kind of look like, right? You don't need to be perfect. But like if you have, you know, a slope of 0, it looks like that. If you have a slope of 1, a slope of 1 goes up somewhere like there. It doesn't need to be perfect. If you have a slope of 2, ooh, boy, if you have a slope of 3, you know, a slope of 3 is steeper than a slope of 1, but you don't need to bust out a protractor. Just draw something that's a little steeper like that. If you have, you know, a slope that's equal to negative 1, um, that would be going down as you go to the right. If you have, say, a slope of, you know, negative 4, that'd be going down, but also very steep. So it might look something like that. So those are all examples of various slopes and that sort of thing. Okay, so let's go from here. Um, let's go ahead and draw, draw this out and finish this out. Okay, so negative 1, negative 1, we had a slope of negative 1. Okay, now let's keep going. And you can do this on your own, right? If we plug in, say, 0, comma, negative 1. There, my slope is equal to uh, 2 times 0 minus minus 1. Then it has a slope of positive 1. Okay, and then if I plug in, uh, oh, yeah, now, okay. If I plug in the value there, yeah, okay, that seems good. And then if I plug in the value here, which is 1, comma, negative 1, then we have 2 times 1 minus minus 1. That's a slope of 3. So just have that be a little bit steeper. And again, we're not looking for perfection. It has a slope of 3. It just should be steeper than the slope of 1. Okay, now at 0, 0, of course, we have a slope of 0. If we look at the point negative 1, 0, my dy dx there is equal to 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So we just have a slope of negative 2. So I don't know, a little steeper than a slope of negative 1, something like that. Um, if I look at the next one here, so that's at 1, comma 0. So my slope there is 2 times 1 minus 0, so a slope of 2 should be, I don't know, like a little steeper than a slope of 1. Eh, somewhere roughly around there. And now we're just going to continue. And you can kind of do these in your head if you want, um, or you can kind of write it out like I've been doing. You know, if you plug in 0, comma 1, that's 2 times 0 minus 1. That's the slope of negative 1. Uh, that looks incredibly crappy. So if you have 0, comma 2, that's 2 times 0 minus 2. It's the slope of negative 2. So that's a little steeper. At 1, 1, that's 2 times 1 minus 1. That's the slope of just positive 1. At 1, 2, that's 2 times 1 minus 2. That's the slope of 0. That's cute. Okay. At negative 1, comma 1, so that would be... Um, Jeez. Negative 1, comma 1 would be 2 times negative 1 minus 1. That's the slope of negative 3. And then this would be a slope of negative 4. So it's kind of hard to see. And again, I'm not expecting perfection, but we want to make sure we have our positives and our negatives right. We want to make sure we have zero slopes in the appropriate places here and here. Um, and then we're trying to make sure, of course, that we have our... Uh, you know, our, our 2 is steeper than 1, our negative 2 is steeper than negative 1, and roughly like that. But something like I've drawn is fine. You don't need to have a perfect graph. So that's the slope field. Okay, um, a couple tips. We talked about this uh, briefly. If your first derivative is equal to 0, a slope of 0 is a horizontal line. If your first derivative is undefined, what I want you to do is leave it blank. Don't draw anything there. Um, just Leave, leave the dot blank. Uh, and then the only other thing I wanted to remind you of is look for patterns. Okay, so one example of what this might look like is pretend we have to draw a slope field curve for dy dx equals 2x. And I might give you, like this is one of your homework problems, I think. So I might give you an armada of points that look like this. 
and you might actually have to fill in like just an absolute boatload of points here like I think you do on your homework but there are actually some really nice patterns that allow you to save a lot of time on this so for example if you look at this and you recognize oh there is no y in this equation So when you're drawing your slope field, every point with x equals 1 has the same slope. So at x equals 1, all the points have the same slope. This is an incredibly bad one. So at x equals 1, all the points have the same slope. So there, the dy dx is equal to 2 times 1, which is 2. So all these points just have a slope of 2. Okay. If I look at x equals 0, all the points have a slope of 0. If I look at x equals 2, all the points have a slope of 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. So that's a slope of 4. That's pretty steep. And then at 3, we're really steep. We have slopes of 6. Okay. And then here we have slopes of negative 2. Oh, jeez. It's a train wreck. And then we have slopes of negative 4. And then at negative 3, we have slopes of negative 6. So they're all going down as you go to the right. So that's what it'll look like. So look for those patterns. Uh, and again, I'm just plugging in these points um, and kind of drawing out the slope through that point. So dy dx, again, this is saying the slope of that point is equal to 2 times x value of that point. Okay, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about today was a solution curve. And the idea behind a solution curve is basically what you're going to do is you're going to do a different color, is you're going to start at a point and you're going to follow the slope field lines in both directions. In both directions until uh, you get to the edge of your area. Okay, so what I'm going to do in red is I'm going to draw a slope field that goes through, I don't know, let's say the point, slope field that goes through the point, three comma, well, let's do a different one. Let's go through two comma negative one. Ah. Okay, so if I have to draw a slope field through two negative one, it's saying let's start at the point two negative one and just try and follow those slope field lines in both directions. So if I follow those up and okay, then it starts to go. And, and again, I'm not expecting perfection. I'm just trying to follow the slope field lines a little. And then as I go over here, it starts to flatten out a little bit, and I go to the edge of the graph. Okay. Um, let's draw, for example, in a different color. Let's do orange. Let's do a, also, I should not have said slope field. I should have said solution curve. Sorry, that's a solution curve. The slope field is the whole thing. So if we do one more, let's do a solution curve through um, the, the point, let's say, 0, 1. So the way I'm going to draw that is I'm going to start at 0, 1, and I'm just going to follow the slope field lines to both sides. So I start out flat. As I go to the right, I go flat, and then I'm going to go up, and I'm kind of going to match through my slopes and go up that way. And that's the idea. I'm trying to match my slopes. You know, if my slopes are looking like that, I want to go between them and not like at an angle towards them or something. Okay. So uh, as I go to the other side, okay, I go out to the left. Oh, geez, that didn't go well. Um, I'm going to go to the left, it's pretty flat, and then it starts to go up, and somewhere like that. So that's an example of what a solution curve looks like. I'm just trying to follow the slope field lines in both directions. Okay, so I know my picture is pretty crappy, so let me go back to my little app here and show you um, some more solution curves. So this is pretty cool because you can click on a point, and it'll give you the solution curve through that point. If I click on a point here, it gives me the solution curve. That one's undefined, so that's why it gives me a problem here. Um, but if I click there, it gives you a solution curve through that point. Now, we could look at some other cool ones, right? So if we look at, say, that cosine of x squared minus y that was doing something pretty cool, the solution curves are going to look a little wacky. But these are actually like real solution curves. Um, so that's kind of cool. So you just click on a point, and this just shows you what is the solution curve through that point. Just kind of going in both directions. Let's go back to the example we just got. I'll show you something cool. So let's say 2x. Here's that 2x one. Um, you drew this basically on your, your notes. Obviously, you had more point, fewer points. But if you click on a point and give a solution curve through that point, that's what it looks like. Okay. Now, hey, I thought about that. Uh, if I click on 0, 0, here's my solution curve. Doesn't that solution curve kind of look like a, a, a parabola, right? Like a y equals x squared? But what would the derivative be of y equals x squared? The derivative would be 2x 
And the dy dx is 2x. Oh, what if I click down here at negative 3? Well, that looks like the curve of x squared minus 3. What would the derivative of x squared minus 3 be? Oh, it would still be 2x. Oh, oh, there is something interesting at play here. I will see you all soon. Thanks for watching.